happy, happy, happy Saturday. It took me a second. I was doing something. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got one minute to go live. So <laughs> here I am. Hello, hello. Still waiting <laughs> for somebody to show up. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I'm actually sitting. I'm actually sitting today. Hello. Okay, I'm going to put on my glasses so I can see everybody. Hi, Suzanne. And Christina, I think, was like, whoop, she went up there. And Rachel, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. These weeks are just flying by. Is this our last weekend? Yep, yeah, it's our last weekend in February. Hello, Patty. Oh my gosh, Patty. Your wings are so beautiful. Hello, Leanne. Hello, Leanne. Oh my goodness. A little bit of a blah, 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 blah this morning. So good to see everybody. I have such a full, full, like stuff to talk about. I can't even believe it. And, you know, I, I had my, I, I was going to do a studio little tour today. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait on that. And the reason is, is because, um, so, you know, I launched my class yesterday and it, everything is amazing. It went well. I didn't have any hiccups and, um, I just kind of was, oh my gosh, if you guys could see, uh, one, two, there are seven, oh, okay, hold on, I'm going to see if we can see this, there are seven, oh wait, I'd have to flip my camera, hold on, hold on, okay, ready? I don't know if you guys can see this, I'm going to zoom in, oops, I can't zoom in, I'm on Facebook Lives. You can't see them all, but there are seven robins right now. I just filled up my bird bath, and I'm just going to leave it on there for a minute while everybody gets hopped on. Too bad I put those chairs right in front of the bird bath. Can you see them on the, can you see them? Oh, I'm going to move them. Oh, no, if I go out there, they'll all fly away. <laughs> and I have no idea why I'm whispering. It's not like they can hear me. <laughs> They're very busy, but you can see them right, right over there. So I just looked out the window and I love Robins. They're not as, there's not as super, they're not super red. Like I think on the East Coast, they have a redder breast, but um, oh my goodness, look how much fun they're having. All right, next live I do, I will move that chair in front of them. Okay, but while everybody's getting on, um, there they go, fly away little guys. I um, have so much I want to chat about. All right, so bye-bye, birdies. Okay, moving back to me. <laughs> moving back to me. <laughs> um, okay, there, I want you guys to see the, see the wings. Okay, so when I launch a class, I, you know, you put so much into it. It takes a long time, and um, I just wanted to make sure everybody was doing okay with it and nobody had any issues logging on. And then, you know what I did? I went upstairs and I cleaned my boys' rooms, literally cleaned them. They're teenagers, they're disgusting from top to bottom. And it felt like so therapeutic. And I think it's because, you know, it was completely not work related. It was not about the class. It was not about anything. I had thought I was going to spend the whole day creating art yesterday and getting my studio ready and for you guys, so that did not happen. So I will do that. But it's so funny. You have to really pay attention to what your body is asking you to do. And it wasn't like I was tired. I just felt like cleaning. And I was talking to my sister about it and we were laughing because she tells me that she, when she procrastinates on a project, she'll clean. I find when I'm finished a project, I'll go clean. I'll clean whatever I have, whatever I see. There's my mom. Hello, Heather. Hello, Nanny. <laughs> okay, so I have so much to talk about today. We're going to go through some questions. I have a demo for you guys. I have, I have so much love for everybody right now with what's going on in our crazy world and I really want to talk about that after my demos about just tips and ideas on how to find the light. 
and all of a sudden my internet said trying to reconnect. So whenever I see that, you guys, I am going to stop talking. So you don't miss a thing, all right? And I think I might actually open up the garage door and open up my door and that will help the internet. But before I do that, I wanna show you these flowers. Hello, Donna. Okay, I'm on my, I'm on my rolly Woo! chair. Okay, so here's my bouquet that I cut this morning. It's a little big, but I wanna show you something first that we just did this. Hold on. Oh, hello, all these petals that are flying everywhere. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, look how big this is. So, you guys, one of my favorite things in the springtime is seeing all the blossoms, like the cherry blossoms and the fruit trees. And right now, where I live, so it's February, it's the end of February, these are all in bloom right now. And. You know how a couple weeks ago it was so hot and we were having record temperatures? Well, this week we've had record lows. It's actually been very, very, very cold. And um, I was so worried that some of these things were going to freeze. And um, this is a plum tree that I have. I have a couple plum trees. This is a Santa Rosa plum tree. And I have so many plums on this tree. I don't have to really worry about cutting off some of these branches, but the thing about this guy is it will drop its, <laughs> it will drop pretty fast. So they don't always work out in your bouquet, but I just thought, and they don't really smell this one, but I just thought it would be really pretty to show you. So this is from my plum tree. All right, so let me put this guy over here. And then, yes, I forgot to put my frog in here, but here's what I have this morning. So look how gorgeous these are. All right, so one of my favorite things besides the uh, fruit trees that are blooming, this is called an echium. Do you see how gorgeous it is? And I love showing you guys these at this time of year. And if you're on my Instagram or my Facebook, you'll see, whoops, you see, if I had my frog, it would stick up straight. You will see that um, in a couple weeks, these, this is the first one in bloom. And you'll see, that the bees are crazy about echium and I have and they're all wild they all are wild on in, in my garden and they love a slope they they love a slope and they love this coastal weather and they grow huge so all of my echium bushes are like 15 feet tall so I just went and picked one for you guys this morning and then I have some um, Mexican sage no, Heather, Mexican Heather. I have some salvia in here, isn't that beautiful? Salvia is pretty, like it will grow all year here and it's and it's really gorgeous and there's so many different types. And then I have a, a few snow drop lily guys in here. And um, what else? Oh, a tiny bit of bougainvillea, they're growing back. So the bougainvillea will sort of die down in the winter and, and lose that beautiful bright leaf and um, and then they will start to come back. So there we go. All right, I'm gonna open that door and open the garage door. Just fingers crossed that we have amazing service and not drop again, because they didn't like that. So hold on one second, I'll be right back. Get your sketchbooks out. Oh, you should see the, you should see the uh, little, the little confetti from my plum tree. So the thing about the modems I have all over the house is that one is in the garage and one is behind this door. And so I think it's like all of the sort of walls that I have up. Okay, so that was my bouquet. Hopefully that inspired some of you guys to, to paint some flowers. Um, the thing, I have to also say before I start doing the demos is my heart was exploding yesterday when I started to see some of the pieces of the new course Bird of Humanities come out and oh my goodness like I wrote a post about this the other week about when you sell a painting and you you sell a painting to somebody and they love it as much as you 
loved making it and you don't even want to part with it because you love it so much but then when somebody buys it and they love it just as much it just fills my heart so the other thing that fills my heart is when I see I start to see some of the posts of people who have taken the class what whatever somebody posted yesterday the sweetest little Ellie from the whimsical elephant class and the hearts that I'm seeing with the wings you guys, I literally was in tears. They're, they are so beautiful. But even more than that, it just makes me, it just fills me up so much to just see that other people are loving it and this creating these this beautiful art. And so I really, really appreciate it when you guys post it. In fact, what, I think it was Jeannie sent me it separately on a DM. I'm like, can you post it to the group? I want everybody to see how gorgeous this is. So. And I'm going to talk a, a little bit about that class towards the end as well. I don't know what I have all over here, um, but I had a couple. I had a couple questions come in this week, and one of them I thought was actually on my YouTube channel, but it was such a good question that I thought, you know what, this would really apply to all of you guys in this group, and it would apply to like almost anybody taking my courses because there is a little bit of a weird layer that we create which is when we do and not every course I teach has this but a lot of the painting courses do is that when we're building up our layers one at a time we get to sort of that middle stage which can be kind of a little bit of the like ugly stage um, and and one thing I like to do is I can go really busy and then I can soften it by adding some sort of like dry brush technique and then I can go busy again. And so one of the questions that came in was that this person had um, done her painting and I think she was doing the whimsical elephant. I'm not 100% sure, but she had done her painting and she did too many, she did too much dry brushing. And she was like, how can I get all of that awesome layer underneath to come back? So I thought, you know what, that is a perfect demo because that happens to me and I want to show you guys how easy it is to get back to what you had. So I actually have this painting and <laughs> it's like one of my demo paintings that I swear I don't know when if I'll ever finish it but I thought you know what we'll do and it could be like done right now but we're going to paint over it a little bit and then we're going to paint over it again. So I thought what we could do is take a tiny little section. I'm going to dry brush some paint on top of it and then I'm going to bring back some of the layers that's underneath so you can see what I'm talking about. So I thought that was a great question. And then I have a couple other ones, which is, um, I think it was Bonnie who talked about, you know, when you're taking, like if you got onto my YouTube channel and you saw a bunch of tutorial videos or videos that I was in like in process, and then you, you know, you take my free abstract class and, um, and that's only 30 minutes or said an hour that actually might be an hour um, you might think like oh well she's teaching it differently or it's a different technique and so the thing about classes in general or and taking them from artists is that we're always evolving as artists whether you are a teacher or whether you are a student you're always evolving. And so some of my YouTube videos could have been from a few years ago and it could have been a totally different technique and then I found something that I liked better. So now I'm teaching it because I like it better. But there are definitely a couple, what do you call it? Um, not, there's a couple things that I don't kind of waffle on that I really believe are in all of my courses. And I don't even know if that's the right word, waffle on, but. Um, the techniques that I love, and I will do this in almost everything I do, is I really like layering, okay? And, <laughs> oops, layering and building up my canvas. So that's super important to me. And because I really feel like you get such richness and depth when you do that. So I, um, I do that no matter what. So that's one thing that's kind of always gonna be a mainstay is that the layering, whether it's, slightly adjusted technique from one class to another, like even in Bird of Humanities, my first layer is slightly different. Um, you're still layering, okay, so that's one. Two is that I have a tremendous love of color and that's probably not gonna change throughout my classes because that's who I am. I love 
bright, beautiful color. It makes me so happy to see all the color. I can't imagine one day I'm gonna do a, a painting class in like olive green and brown. That's just not me. So if you take some of my classes and you're, you're wondering like, why is she teaching it differently here? Just keep an open mind about just experimenting or playing with that idea and try it. And know that um, every teacher is always trying to evolve too and, and grow. And whatever I learn, I love to share. So anyway, that's just a little thing on that. And all right, so hold on. I'm gonna, I'm going to flip this, flip, 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 flip. You can see that. Got my door open. Can you hear the birdies out there? All right, I also have to put my apron on so I don't put stuff all over my shirt. All right. So, whoops. So here is our piece. I'm gonna try and put it right about there, I think. Oh, you're welcome, Bonnie. I hope that helped. You just text me or email me if you have any other questions. I'd be happy, happy, happy to help. Okay, so here is an area that I thought I would work on a little bit today. So, you know, this is like lots of layering and so many yummy little things are happening in here, but I thought it'd be fun to cover some of this up a little bit and then bring it back so you can see what I'm talking about. But let me get my apron on. Let me get my apron on. All right. I've got my, I've got my happy apron on today. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing a brush and Nanny is listening and she's going to say, oh no, you got to dip it in water, but I'm not going to dip it in water. I have um, this King Art brush here and I'm just going to grab... A little bit of blue I'm using brilliant blue and a little bit of white and I'm not using any um, uh, high flow or inks right now I'm just gonna mix up a tiny bit for to just dry brush this on here so let me just move that a little bit so you can see what I'm doing let me move the palette over here too so you can see. there we go so this is a big canvas so I can do all that fun stuff all right I'm just gonna go right in and all right so really probably the most proper thing to do is you do wet your brush a little bit but I don't so I'm sorry I'm being naughty okay so I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna cover up some of this yumminess Just a little bit because you know covering some of the busyness up is really important really important to soften things up and let your eye have a break you know you can look at some of your pieces and think oh my gosh it's so busy and if that's your case just try this so here we go now imagine I have a lot more of this on my canvas and this sweet student of mine covered up too much of her beautiful canvas. So now the thing I don't know is how thick she applied her paint. So when you're doing this type of a technique, the reason why I like it so much is because it's very translucent. Look, I'm gonna scooch this down so you can see. You can really see how gently, well, I'm not gentle with my brush strokes, but how little paint I had to put this kind of coverage right here, okay? So I can see everything that's underneath. When I'm doing this technique and this layer, this kind of layer where I'm going in and I'm sort of letting things be less busy, I don't want to have a lot of paint on my, I'm going to do it so you can see it. So let's say I... I don't want to even use the dry brush technique. I'm just going to paint it on just so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh gosh, you can't even see it because you're not even in camera. Hold on. <laughs> well, that was silly. Okay, hold on. 
So right here, I just painted. This is like just paint, all right? This is not dry brushing. This is, this is not my dry brushing technique. This is just putting paint down, all right? So do you see the difference? Like here, you're doing, and this is in the new class too. So if you haven't gotten so far in there, this is good to know. So this is dry brushing. This is a little bit, not any water. And I really am just putting this like, it's almost like chalky. It's like a chalky layer where if I went to soften things up and I just painted, what's going to happen is you do not see the under layer this way, okay? And what's really important is when you do this layer, you want to see what's underneath. You want to like be able to see the, the underneath part. When I paint in a layering style, I really like to get little bits from the layer below to show up. Now, not necessarily all of it, but parts of it. All right, so this is almost dry, so I don't even have to, I was gonna blow dry it or use my heat dry, but I don't even have to, because it's pretty dry. So if you're at a point where you have done this dry brushing everywhere or in too many places, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what did I do? I really like that stuff underneath. Then what I do is I take a small brush. I take small brushes, really, just a couple little guys, my small ones. And that's actually too big. Um, okay, where are my small little brushes? Hold on. Let me turn this lazy Susan around. Let's see what I got over here. Okay, here's a good one. This is like a number two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start to go in and pull up some of these little um, things underneath. All right, so I'm just adding a little bit of white titanium. And I wanna see like what colors are underneath there that I liked. So I knew that there's been some pinks and purples. So over here, I have the Nova Deoxycene Violet. And I have this quinacridone red, and I have some white. Is there a light? There's some like weird light going on. Hmm. Um, so I'm just going to mix up a little bit of that. And right before I got on, I saw a post, I think it was Beth, she had bought some awesome Nova paints and somebody was asking, you know, how long do they last? And I have to say like, a, they last a long time, a real long time. Unless you're painting like super thick and you wanna just, um, you know, I just don't paint that way, but if you were painting super thick, you know, it's four ounces of paint, but I believe they, they last that long. And before I would buy a bigger size, and especially if you're new to Nova, I would get the smaller size and just kind of gauge how long does that take. All right, so what I'm doing here, how long does that take to run out? So I have a, I have bigger pint size. I have bigger tubs in the ones that I love, the colors that I love. But I always started with the small ones. So what I'm doing is I'm going in to where I saw some, you know, things that I really liked. And you don't have to bring up you don't have to bring up all the stuff underneath, but maybe there's a few things that you wanna pull up because having this sort of, you know, chalky look right now underneath is beautiful. So I'm not gonna go and get everything, but let's pull up some stuff. You know, look for like old stencil marks. Okay, so I've got this circle that I that I colored in right here. Colored in. Silly, silly me. Colored in. Covered over. I'm just going to brush back, put this back on. That's pretty. I love these colors together. The blues and the pinks and the purple. So I'm just going over that area and let's do it again with some of these. 
And the other thing too is I grabbed, and I probably won't use them today, but you know, if you had some really tiny things that you painted over and you wanted to bring back up, then you can use my favorite, right? You can use a pink pen, that would work. So this little number two, I love. And I when I do small marks, I like my paint to be really fluid. So I use either the acrylic inks or I use high flow and just a little bit of color over using a white titanium. Like if I, I wouldn't have the same uh, stroke if I used it right out of a big jar, it would be too thick. And sometimes your high flow will bleed a little bit like this one, but that's okay. You just go around it again. And I'm not really washing my brush. I probably should get a new one, but you can go in and you can start to pull up some marks and I'm gonna grab some blue. Let's grab some blue. I have this little tiny guy. And I'm just gonna make some marks going back over that area. And so what you're achieving by doing this is you're having a less busy area, it's less busy, but you still have some of that yumminess underneath that if you cover it up, you can go like, oh, I can save it. So the number one tip is to when you are doing the dry brush or you're softening or using it for like a chalky, softer look, just do little bits at a time, you know, little bits at a time, um, little strokes at a time. Kind of thing. So you can see how I'm bringing that back up here because I did this, you know, on purpose. What I would do now is if this had happened and I painted it, oh, it was a mess, I should see. I, okay, yeah. If um, if I had done this in a lot more places, then what I would suggest you do is you go back to the layer where you're just starting to put like stencils down. Like if you find like you've now painted over too much of it and it's all opaque, then go back to the go back to the layer with some stenciling and some mark making, and then sort of not start again, but go backwards a couple layers. That will help too. Um, but you know, you can still go in and nothing's ever sort of ruined, I believe, if you work with acrylics. I've certainly made a mess with watercolors and that's much harder to kind of cover over. But you can, I can start to go into this thicker blue and soften it. This way. Love using my fingers whenever I can. So hopefully that helps. Do you guys have any questions on this sort of idea of the, you know, starting with a dry brush to soften areas and then building back up in case for some reason in case for some reason um, you went too far, let me know. All right. I think, well, I know we're like a minute behind schedule or you guys. All right. So hope, I'm going to, I'm going to move up the camera back. So let's, I've got other stuff to talk to you guys about today. My, my wrist. 
do you use something thin do you use something to thin your paint when working small no i don't the you guys probably wouldn't probably need to see what i'm talking about Ooh. um hello again i always use well i that's not true i just yes i do I don't use a thinner, and I know that there's some people who have been talking in the group with some different types of acrylic kind of thinners. I just haven't tried them. There's probably amazing things out there. I just haven't tried them. What I do to thin my paint is to always work with a high flow or an acrylic ink. And that way, when I use like a number two brush or I use a little tiny weeny angle shader, then it's not thick and goopy. I don't like paint, painting thick and goopy. So that's what I use every time. And it's sort of like, they're always gonna be at my art table. I never sit down to paint without the inks or a fluid ink or a fluid paint to work with. And for those of you who are totally new, who haven't taken any classes and have no idea what I'm talking about, there is a, there is a video that you can make your own. And I just find that I'd rather use that. I never use water. Uh, hardly, I should never say never. I hardly use water to thin my paints. I usually always use an ink and it really helps, especially those little tiny details. And again, you guys, seriously, these are amazing. Um, okay, 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 baby press, All right, so I wanna to talk to you guys about some, some important things. I actually probably have to put my glasses on so I can make sure I'm, I'm I got some, wedding agent yeah i don't know like i'm just like not the type of teacher that has all of the like varnishes and all that kind of stuff i have probably things right there but i don't know i just do what i do and i like what i do and it works right now so we're all good um okay i just want to talk about something that we all are dealing with right now and um oh the 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 sort of the heaviness that we all feel this week it's so important to acknowledge it and I thought I would share some things that I do that helps me and I'm wondering, I'm hoping that it will help you. And it started like the last couple days, I've been like seeing things and then, you know, Cheryl sent this beautiful, her wings that she did. So if you guys haven't seen Cheryl's post, it's a little bit down in our group feed, but um, you know, the, all of the heaviness going on with Ukraine right now, I know we are all um, feeling that, okay, so we're just kind of ending our pan, or not ending, but we're in a new phase of our pandemic, and then, oh my gosh, there's this heaviness over here too, and as well, and continues. And so, I just want to encourage you guys to keep keep working on your art it's really important and if it's not art just being creative it's so important to help it helps in so many ways to get your feelings down whether you want to write um whether you play music whether you're making bouquets just keep your thoughts thinking um and feelings that come out onto your canvas i think it's it's just so helpful. And there's been a few posts in the group too about people who have been having a really hard time this week and they have been creating art because it helps them get through some heavy times. And I can't tell you how many times that I have had a heavy heart and art has helped me. And I really would encourage you, and especially for, um, like the piece that Cheryl did, it touched me so much because she took her heart the heart class. She took her bird of humanity and she created her wings. And Shara lives in Germany. I'm pretty sure it's Germany. And she's very close to Ukraine. And I know that proximity to countries is a whole nother level of, you know, anxiety and um, feelings. But everybody around the world is feeling this right now. And so she took her heart and I wrote it down because I, I really can't remember everything. But, um, Instead of doing the story of the bird of humanity, she wrote the heart of peace underneath it. And it made me cry this morning because it was so beautiful. And I know that when she was creating these wings, her heart was full 
it was it's still full whether it's full of sadness it's still full of love and the love she felt was completely came across onto her piece and i just wanted to to say that when you're taking this class um the bird of humanity because i know a lot of you guys on here are you don't have to use the story that is written for you you can write anything you want it could be uh, a poem to a loved one um i and i think i talk about this in the class i i put the story in there because that's the whole reason that i created the wings but it could symbolize something different to you and i want you to feel like no matter whenever whatever class you take um always feel like you can put your own your own spin on it and so cheryl's heart was awesome and then um here's a couple other things that i do that i'm hoping that that will help you okay i think that the biggest thing for me is that i um it's so <clears throat> it's it's so true that the more love that you give that um you're just going to get that love back okay so i was thinking about this this morning so if we can all just send so much love of a vibration out to all of the people who are you know um in such turmoil right now and if you send all that love in your heart out let me tell you guys it all comes back it all comes back it's like the more love we can send out you're gonna feel that love come right back. So when you're anxious and when you're sad and you're like scared because of all of the news, just keep sending the love out. Send it out, send it out, send it out, send it out. And I have been doing that all week and it really, 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 really helps me. And whether that's your love in a prayer mode or it's in a just spiritual mode or it's a giving, it doesn't matter what it is. So that's like the easiest thing for me that's an easy, that's like, okay, we can do that. We can totally do that. We can all get together and send love, okay? And because it's a vibration and that goes out there. The other thing that I do is I am grateful. And I wrote in my journal this morning how, how grateful I am that I, I live where I live and I get to do what I do and I can be here right and that's a huge thing to sort of that really helps me grounds me it grounds me a lot and it might help you guys too like so being grateful is not necessarily saying i'm not thinking about what's going on it just makes you just more aware of how good it is um, how good it can be and so what i like to do is i like to look for the light i like to look for the joy and the love when we're in a really hard place and this happened a lot during the early stages of covid too like so so i like to make art and put all my feelings into art i want to send all the love i can out i try to look for the light and the love and how it and the joy and how i do that is just the littlest things sometimes you guys like just looking at those robins this morning i mean how beautiful were those robins and so just for a few minutes it's like, doesn't that just fill you up? So if you're having a really hard time and it's you're having some moments where you're really anxious and um, you, it's just really hard to handle, just try to go out and about in nature especially and that will help, okay? All of these little things are just helping. Um, then a couple more things that I like to do is, I like to, it's really hard, I really try to just turn off a lot of that noise and sometimes, you know, I want to be informed. I want to know what's going on. I don't want to shut myself out and be in a, and put my head in the sand. But at the same time, you know, news stations can over, they can overdo it. And um, it sometimes can be hard, especially in your household where somebody's got the TV on 24 seven. Um, so what I suggest is to try and take little breaks from that if you can, and even social media, just take some breaks from all of that noise if that helps. And then um, something else happened this morning and it made me just think, oh my gosh, I can totally do, <clears throat> do this too, is <clears throat> you guys, one of my friends is Betty Franks and she's an amazing artist if you guys follow her, know her, she's fantastic. She lives near me. Her parents 
live in Croatia and she goes I think like every two or three months to Croatia and she's there right now and it's really hard again they're right there they're they're right near Ukraine and and it's really hard to see other countries go through what they're going through you're just like oh my gosh what how is this possible and so she announced this morning that she does when she goes to Croatia she does all this beautiful art and she sells it she comes back and she sells it and so she's donating it. She's gonna sell it and donate it. And um, I can put a link to her. And um, they'll, they'll, they sell out in five minutes. I mean, I bought one and last year and it was like, I was like refreshing my feed because I wanted it so bad. Anyway, so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do that. So I hadn't even, <laughs> I haven't even told you guys the date, but I had two Zoom classes coming up that I booked with my moderator and one of them is March 12th and the other is in April. And I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? Cause, oh, and the and the class, and, and I'll get this on our, I'll get this, I'll send this out soon, like the next couple days. But I thought I wanted to do a Zoom class on these pieces that I've been working on. And I thought, I'm going to just donate the whole entire class. So whoever signs up, all of that money is gonna go um, to to help anybody that we can in need. And if you guys, I think I saw a couple, somewhere in our group this morning, somebody was posting a link. Um, I wanna find the right one that gives 100% of the money. Cause you know, sometimes like, sometimes don't, funds are just like oh really are you really giving it all so let's find a let's find one together that we feel good about and 100 percent is going to go to to that fund and that's what i'm going to do and then it made me think oh my gosh it's not just ukraine it's like lots of places like afghanistan and donna propus who's in our group She's so beautiful and sweet. She, her church is helping Afghan refugees in Buffalo, New York. And so I was thinking, the second Zoom I'm gonna do, we're gonna all donate towards that. And we're gonna do that. And it just, so, so here's the thing I wanna tell you is that you may not be able to donate and that may, that's fine. You can give all the love in your heart. That's amazing. So many people don't even do that. So that is amazing. But even if you can have a bake sale, or even if you have a piece of art you can sell, or anything helps. And so I just wanted to, to not preach too much, but I want to acknowledge that, um, you know, I come here to spread joy and love, and sometimes it's really hard to do that when it's like a really hard time in our world. And so there is a way to keep finding that love and keep finding the joy, okay? So that's super important, and I just wanted to, to tell you that, um, okay, so I'll get more information on the March class, um, and it will just be fun. We're gonna paint, we're gonna do an abstract piece. It's not gonna be so technical. It's gonna be, we're gonna paint together. It will be live, it will be on Zoom, so you can ask me any questions as we're working together, and I want it to be really fun. And if we, all our collective hearts are around, you know, supporting what we can, then wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? So that's coming, so that's on March 12th, and it will be Saturday. Yeah, I think that's a Saturday. It will be the same time as this live, so hopefully that works for you guys. And, okay, so let's just talk about this real quick. Okay, our, our, our beautiful, wings and um oh and bonnie if you can't make the zoom class don't worry about it you can still you can still get it and buy it and we'll still go to the fund because it'll be a replay so just let you know all the zoom classes have a replay okay so all right one i <laughs> just i have a couple of announcements to make about the class okay um I don't want anybody to feel like they haven't got their act together because they have not started the class. I really encourage, like I love seeing the art, but it can be all year long and I'm, or for the rest of your life. You have access to the class forever. And you, oh, Jill, sorry. The timing is gonna be the same time. It will be, it will be 10, the same like 10 to 12 P, uh, PT, it will be this time um but if you haven't started the the bird of humanity class please don't even worry about it it makes me go like no 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 you don't have to start you just start when you want to start and i want you guys to know something often when i'm painting 
I go layer by layer and it could take me weeks. So I just want you to know, like I don't want you to feel any anxiety about that you bought the class and you need to rush and get it done. Everybody works at completely different um, times. I, I think that's super important. And then I want to give a big shout out to Paul and Karen. Okay, so Paul is in Toronto. I don't know if he's even listening today. But Paul was so sweet. He emailed me. So I sent, I let the class go live on Thursday night because Karen is, <laughs> Karen in, in England, she's like my guinea pig. She'll like make sure that it's actually live. <laughs> So Karen sends me a message on WhatsApp at 11.30 when I went to bed that night to say, yeah, I'm on, it's working. So, so I went to bed feeling good. When I wake up, um, Paul sent me a message to say, he was so sweet. He's like, I just want you to know that I went through all the videos because he didn't paint it. He just wanted to watch it first, uh, which is another great thing to do. If you ever take any classes, sometimes you just watch all the videos and then you decide like, okay, how much time do I need to, to do it and whatnot. And anyway, so he watched all the videos and he said, they're all amazing, but there's one that, I don't know what happened. It sort of just stopped. It may have been an internet thing on lesson three or layer three. And so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, thank you. So I go in and oh my gosh, like brain screw up. So layer three on the first color blocking video went to nothing. It was like, blah, 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 done. And so I had 10 minutes that was not exported on that one video. <laughs> so to uh, my buddies like Patty and Ginny, um, you didn't miss much because of course your paintings are absolutely gorgeous. But um, anyway, there were 10 minutes and I put them back in there. So thank you, Paul. You guys are the best because you guys in this group particularly can send me emails and, and um, let me know and I just love you guys, so thank you. Um, okay, so the last thing I wanna do is I do wanna pull our card, and Suzanne in Ireland, who's on this call right now, she's so awesome. I saw her card this morning on her Instagram, I think it was, and she pulls them too, and I know Kathy does, and oh, I love Gabby Bernstein. Um, this one is from Kathy. Uh, Suzanne got me this one, the Spirit Junkie. This is from Gabby Bernstein. And I was listening to a podcast with her and Kathy Heller yesterday that was so good and dreamy and juicy and all that good stuff. So, all right, so I'm going to pull her card. I'm looking at my long list and I want to make sure I got everything in, the, in there. And, and we're almost at an hour. Can you believe it? The Robins never came back. They'll come back next time. Okay, I'm gonna pull a card. <laughs> the the easel that's crooked behind me is bugging me. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna work. <laughs> okay, here's our card for today. This is a good one. This is a good one. Okay, and they're all so beautiful. The greatest experience of freedom comes when I let go of what others think of me. Is that amazing? It is so true, you guys. Oh my gosh. My greatest experience of freedom comes when I let go of what others think of me. And you know, and I know this is backwards because of the thing, but this is so valuable. And especially in the world of social media, it's so valuable. When I first started doing a lot of my Instagram and Facebook, and I was always so worried about like, I'm not good enough, or who am I to do this? Or, you know, they're so much better, and my art's not nearly as good, or um, I wonder what they're gonna think. Like, look at my hair and my glasses, and da da da. And you guys, it is so true. If we just let go of what they think, and oh, it's like this, ready? It's like, oh, the weight comes right off. There used to be times when I had a lot of um, pictures on my Instagram in the beginning where I'm like, oh gosh, nobody commented, no one likes that, and I would delete it. And now I leave everything. I just leave it, because I don't care. I mean, of course I care, but I don't care care. I, um, I don't let that bother me anymore. And it's not always the easiest thing to do, you guys, but 
if there's somebody that you're really worried about what they think of you, then that's on them. That's on them. That's not on you. You guys all have beautiful, huge hearts. That's why you guys are in this group. Everybody that's in this group has the biggest heart. Right? Full, 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 full. And yes, to Patty, who's, um, she sells her art. And for anybody, oh, and it reminds me, I got one other question I was going to answer for Wendy. Um, for anybody who sells their art, um, it's hard. It takes some time. It takes some time and it takes practice. Okay, it takes practice, but you got to really let that go. It's always them. And here's the thing that I'm learning and I, I take a lot of courses um, from Kathy Heller. It's a, bright, it's a vibrational match. It's the people who love you, who feel good, what you're doing. That's all that matters. doesn't matter if Lucy Brown down the street thinks that I'm a wacky, wacky woman. And, you know, it doesn't matter. That's her, not me. Um, okay, one last question that came up that I forgot to answer. I'm going to answer right now is uh, twofold. Um, Wendy was asking about, like, how do you make things with your art? How do you put things and reproduce them? How does that happen? How do you happen? And there's two, one main thing. Okay, so my biggest lesson on this one is what you do in the most important thing, if you want to reproduce your art, is get the best scan of your art. And what I mean by that is not necessarily the old fashioned, you know, scanner. I'm not talking about that one as much as a scan these days could be a professional photograph could be a scan you want to get a digital jpeg a digital photoshop file of your art that is the most important thing okay and i don't do mine nope my i don't i don't do mine at all i send it away to get done and um so wendy so some of your art that's that you're thinking about creating things you want to make sure you get a, a good scan and patty do your photos and things before you sell your art okay and i am doing i'm going to send a newsletter survey out to you guys too to just see what you guys are thinking about some of you guys are wanting to do some art business which is my my big passion is to teach that and i am coming up with a bunch of different classes and one of them is going to all be about how to do reproductions how to make things how to get your art on products and sell it and all that good stuff so that is coming so so don't think i'm blowing off your question i just um want you to know right now as you're getting your hands wet in that area is to make sure is it your hands wet or your feet wet feet wet is to get a good photograph get a get good scan and how you get a good photograph is you look locally for a photographer in your neighborhood in your town and you call them up and they probably have it all set and they just do it and it's like 20 bucks super cheap okay um la -la. all right with that said you guys i want you to have a amazing day and an amazing week and if you catch yourself feeling like tight in your heart and in your chest about what all of the horrible things that are going on over in the Ukraine right now and in Afghanistan and in so many places. Just take some deep breaths and feel that love and send that love back out into the world. And that will make you feel a little bit better, I think, I believe. It will make you feel a little bit better. And you guys all have goodness and we all wanna help. All right, we all want to help and we all want to do our best. So um, I love you guys. You fill me up. You have no idea. I can't wait to keep seeing all your beautiful wings and even the non-wings that are coming, like that a gorgeous elephant that I just saw yesterday. Um, all right, so I'll see you next Saturday here. And then the Saturday after will be our Zoom class. And I will get all of that out um, to you guys so you know all about it. Okay, all right, big hug, big love. See you later. Bye-bye.